This episode is brought to you by Paramount Plus. Ewan McGregor stars as Count Alexander Rostov in A Gentleman in Moscow, the new limited series based on the best selling novel. Stream it with the Paramount Plus with Showtime plan. Visit ParamountPlus.com to try it free. is popping oh let me scoot this one down a little bit you know it's okay calm down do the jig what do you mean trying to what you see <laughs> y'all don't judge me i'm trying to make this perfect you okay let's get it popping see i'm not, I'm not even gonna tell y'all what happened we're gonna get it popping because y'all already know what today is Let's get started. For the couch chronic, couch chronic, there ain't, ain't no fucking limits. 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 Every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday from 8 Central Time, you don't never want to miss a couch. Trust me, it ain't no fucking limits. I said none. Period. Okay. If you don't know, today is prison talk. This whole week is prison talk. I have a if you haven't heard this from my first album, it's called The Dominique J. Let's go. I came a long way from the pen all the way to the stage. Hey, yeah. And I ain't never giving up. No, no. And I ain't never giving up. No, no. I came a long way from the pen all the way to the stage. being locked up because I was just like you know a lot of people really wouldn't understand so like I said this whole week is prison talk if this subject is not if you don't feel like you know if you feel like hey I ain't never been to prison it's nothing I can talk about that's fine you can listen but if you know anybody that's been locked up or if you yourself have been locked up then you are more than welcome to join the live like I said it's prison talk on the couch number one tell everybody who you are and where you are located Trying to find, and we out of laws of America. 
Period. Period. Tell everybody what you do. Um, we make music, uh, art, everything. We do whatever. Facts. All of That's real. Now, um, one, tell everybody how much time you did. None. <laughs> you, you know anybody that did time? Right. But if you know anybody that did time, do you feel like you did time with them? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Most definitely. Yeah. All them calls and letters and, and yeah, oh, yeah. Commentary is very necessary if you got somebody locked up like Uncle Pimp did. Right. Now, let me ask you this, because you've never been locked up. How do you know that commissary is very necessary? Oh, i never been to the pen. I've been to the county. Oh, okay, okay. Wait, let me yeah. tell you this. I will say this. If y'all have been in jail, <coughs> you are more than welcome to come talk about it because these jails ain't too motherfucking jazzy either. <coughs> they damn near a fucking prison. No, for real. So don't feel like, oh, well, I went to jail. She's saying prison, prison talk. No, you can talk about your time in jail. You are more than welcome. I keep the floor open for anybody that's been locked up or did some time in jail or prison. That way... Number one, if they have anything that they want to talk about or if they want to get something out that needs to be getting out, trust me when I say I'm going to use my platform to get out whatever I need to get out. Know mm -hmm. that. Know that. And I'm not going to censor nobody that comes onto this couch. So if you have something to say or if you're talking about your time in prison and you like, well, damn, uh, such and such might hear this. Guess what? Such and such might need to hear that. Because the first story that I ever did on Prison Talk I was telling you guys how I did nine years in the pen. And do you know that black girls wasn't that nice to me? <clears throat> they wasn't. Because they said I talked too proper. I never even, and even if I didn't talk to them, it was you think you better than us. I'm like, I never even said nothing to you. <laughs> I just walked past. But I, I think ain't I'm. Gonna lie, man. I, I ain't no black girl, but even in the black world, I mean, in the free world, you know, uh, black girls have this. Uh, competitive thing about each other, you know what I'm saying? Well, I ain't gonna say all black girls do, but I'm gonna say most of the time they do, as in, like, who she thinks she is with that woo -dee -woo -woo -dee. you know what I'm saying? It's just like, damn, you don't even know her, why you eye-rolling, and, you know what I'm saying? She might be thinking something cute on you, it's like, what's you doing, bitch? Type shit, so, yeah, I understand that. I will say this. Now, it's crazy because I'm genuine. Like, if I tell you something, I'm being genuine. I'm not. And sometimes you might be like, oh, damn, she's trying to be funny. It might sound funny as fuck. But I'm literally being serious as fuck. I promise I am. Like, <laughs> no, for real. So, when those girls used to do that to me, I used to just be like, now all of them, not all of them, but majority of them want to be my friend now. And, I've, and I never hold grudges. I don't, let me tell y'all this. I don't hold grudges. So let me tell you why I don't hold grudges. Because you never know, somebody might have been having a bad day. They might not have mean it to have been rude to you or whatever. But they was. And you took offense to it. And I'm not saying that you taking offense to it is wrong. I'm just saying that sometimes people just have bad days. So I don't hold grudges against nobody. Because one day they might come up to me like, yo, I, I was really fucked up that day. But I want you to know how I'm feeling now. Cool. Nah, well, for real. Yeah. So now I've I've reached out to some of the girls that was mean to me. Well, they've reached out to me. And I didn't like put my hand down like eh no. But some of those girls have reached out to me like, yo, I need some help. Like and I've helped them. I've helped people I'm not gonna name people's names, but I've actually put my you know, my neck out and and, and been put in situations, fucked up situations after helping people. And this is the reason why a lot of us, I'm going to say us because I'm one of them. A lot of us don't like to deal with people that have been locked up with us. And they was, and they do, no, 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 let me, let me say this. Hear me out. That was doing the same things in prison and they doing it now. For real. Like they literally was doing some penitentiary shit in the penitentiary. And then they get out and they still on some penitentiary shit. 
those are the ones that I don't want to be around. Like, yeah, most of them, they definitely going back. They definitely going back. Yeah, it's like, it's 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 one thing to to be a certain type of way in prison because I get it. You gotta be, you gotta put on this this face. You gotta put on this this front when you locked up. But when you get out, can you can you take that mask off? Because we don't need it no more. We don't need that mask anymore. Take your mask off and just be your true you that you wanted to be in prison, but you didn't want to look weak. I'm just saying. It's easy. Like, for some of y'all, it's really hard. Because you were so busy faking that you really believe that that's who you are. It's really fucked up. They really fucked up, y'all. For real. You know, because you want to be, you want to be there for everybody that you was locked up with. You want to love and, and, and try to just, because you know what it's like. You know how it is. You know what they're going through. You even see them and you like, oh, fuck it. I know exactly what phase you in right now. We get like that. Like, because we know. Like, if I see somebody that had just got out, and they got like this little defense, like type of, I'm gonna be like, I know exactly how you feel, what you're going through right now. So I want to reach out, I want to help. But a lot of times we do that and we get fucked over, you know, because it's it's, and maybe it's not intentional on their end, but. They are stuck in the penitentiary ways to the point where they don't know how to treat you as a friend. And it's sad, but it's true. You know, not everybody is stuck. Not everybody is stuck. I'm not saying that everybody is stuck. I'm saying that if you are stuck and you know who you are, you know the signs you, you make everybody uncomfortable around you. Like, we know the signs. I've been there. I've been there. I've been that person, that institutionalized person. I have, and it was just like, fuck, I don't got to be this person. But I've been that girl, you know, so, and I know the signs. So just please be mindful that when you're getting out of prison, that things are really, really different in the world. You know, you don't have to... To, to act like you're something that you're not. You don't have to cheat, scam, or, or I'm going to get you before you get me. You don't have to do that. You don't. Like, you can rest assured that if somebody is reaching out to you or you reach out to somebody and they're actually helping you, that they are being genuine. Rest assured. They are being genuine. If you're just now tuning in, it's the Couch Chronicles, and it ain't no fucking limits, okay? I do this every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from 8 Central Time. Make sure you follow Couch Chronicles No Limits on Spotify, Pandora, THA Couch on Facebook, and TikTok, Couch Chronicles dot No Limits on Instagram, and my main YouTube Instagram, and my dot com, which is T-H-A Real J-A-N-E-L-L. If you're watching on YouTube, why you ain't hit that like button? If you're watching on Instagram, make sure that you share the live. Share the live. Share the live. Shout out to all the Libras. If you're watching, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Libra. <laughs> happy birthday to all the Libras. If you're watching, I hope you got that good positive energy before or after your birthday. Love you. And welcome to the motherfucking couch. What's up, baby? Hey, what up, though? Okay, I see y'all in there working. Tell everybody who you are for the ones that's listening. For the ones that's listening on YouTube and Spotify and Pandora, can you tell everybody who you are and where you located? A bad, bad. Making some classes up here. <laughs> Jerk, you hear me? I said, for the people that's listening on Spotify, Pandora, and YouTube, can you tell everybody who you are, where you're located, and what you do? Detroit. 
That's how you supposed to fucking work, you hear me? Hell yeah. Thank you too, lady. I appreciate the alley you. Hey. Don't think I forgot where I got it from. Tell everybody I said hello. I will. Tell what you mean? Anytime. You know I fuck with you. Y'all my family. Yeah, you just sent me a gift though, for real, for real. You know I, I love y'all. You hear me? Uh, I hear you. I say you know I love y'all. <laughs> I love you. I appreciate you. Everybody in there jamming. Yeah. He said he gonna release something. I don't know what he said. Okay. Oh, he said Empire releasing her song. Hey, that's what's up. That's what's up. Y'all, if you're just now tuning in, it is the Couch Chronicles and it ain't no fucking limit. If you don't know what's going on on YouTube or on Instagram, I got a Detroit people. I got my Detroit family on the motherfucking live. They in the studio cooking up. They got Mav on the beats cooking up from scratch. I keep telling y'all he doing deals for the whole Libra season. So if you're looking for any custom beats, you spend $100, you get one free beat. You spend $150, you get two free beats. Trust me when I say that's a deal, because his beats is usually way more than that, but it is his season, so he's feeling pretty good. So if you're looking for any custom beats, make sure that you tap in with Mav, that's M-A-V dot G-D on Instagram, period. Y'all, like I said, it's prison talk this whole week. Oh, we, I'm gonna have to uh, tap in with him. That nigga raw as fuck. You hear me? Okay, I'm gonna have to tap in with him. Man, he raw as fuck for real, for real. That nigga the truth. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to tap in. I'm typing this in. Y'all, like I said, it's prison talk this whole week. If you want to talk about your time on the yard, come on up. Yeah. You more than welcome. That's mad too. Period. I know that's right. Trying to have them cook something together, man. Okay, I'll just pin everything. Everything is in the description. So if you're watching on Instagram, it's pinned in the description. We're going to get back into prison talk. I'm about to play a song. So, Jerk, love you. We're getting back on the prison talk. <laughs> I'm going to see if I get Detroit got talent too. To, uh, Listen to him, y'all. He is. Period. Y'all, this next song I'm about to play is from my album, Scars on a Diamond. It is called Successful. I want to hear it. Huh? It's called Successful. So let's get into it. Like I said, it's prison talk this whole week on the couch. If you want to talk about your time on the yard, you are more than welcome to come up. I love y'all. Let's get into it. Successful. Who don't want to be successful? I'm a stay on my grind. I'm a shine. Nobody's gonna stop me now.
Monday, if I didn't tell y'all, happy Monday. If y'all don't already know, Question from the Couch is every week. So if you haven't been tuning into the Question from the Couch, then you really are missing out because I'll be asking some good fucking questions. I'll be asking some good fucking questions. So if you haven't been tuning in, you late, baby. But you can always catch up. Make sure you follow Couch Chronicles No Limits on Spotify, Pandora, THA Couch on Facebook, TikTok, Couch Chronicles dot No Limits on Instagram, and my main YouTube Instagram, Emma.com, which is T H A Real J A N E L L. Hey, Dr. Pepper Hernandez. Happy Hispanic Heritage Month, too, to you, goddess. <laughs> Hello, everybody that's joining in. Everybody that's listening on Spotify, Pandora, YouTube, and on Instagram. Shout out to y'all. I definitely appreciate y'all for tuning in. We not done. It's prison talk this whole week. I don't expect everybody to be cool or to be, you know, keen on the subject. It's cool. Because trust me when I say I do not want y'all to be in prison or jail or to experience it at all. So this is why I offer um, prison talk every month. That way we can tell our story. And help keep you out of prison. <laughs> For real. Uh, my new album is dropping in December. I hope that you guys are ready for it. I'm super excited. I'm super ready. I just talked to one of the producers today um, that's going to be on my album. He actually did some work for Migos. And um, I got some major... Well, to me, they major. To y'all, y'all be like, oh, what? To me, they, they major because... Like, I know the music side, like, if you're in the music side, you have to get to know, like, different producers in different states. Like, who's the hottest in what state? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I like to do. So, I like to get with those producers and, and actually connect with them. I like to build relationships. I don't know about y'all, but I'm a, true, I'm a true believer of building relationships with anybody that you want to do a music with. Anybody that you do a podcast with, like, just build a relationship. Why not? Why not? Um, stop gun vi stop the gun violence. The story, which is the story from the victims' um, families and what they're going through and how the judicial system is handling it. The first one aired. The first episode aired September the nineteenth. So if you didn't get a chance to watch it, make sure that you go back and rewatch it. I will be keeping up with the case. So October seventeenth, I will be at the court date. I don't know if I will be able to go live. But I will keep um, documentation of everything, and I will get some. I'm gonna, y'all know I'm gonna get me some footage as fuck. So I'm gonna be getting some footage, and um, I'm gonna see if I can talk to the lawyers and whoever I can talk to because don't think that I don't take this journalism serious because I really do. I really do. October 16th starts the first mental health talk on the couch. So if you are brave enough to talk about your story, like I said about prison talk, even with mental health, your story could help somebody. So if you are brave enough to talk about, you know, your issues with mental health and how you deal with it, even if you don't feel like you're all the way dealt with it, please, please tap in. October the 16th will start the first episode. The new mic on the couch will be dropping this Friday. If you are a person who, um, oh, wait, donation only. Let me say that because a lot of y'all get it twisted. Y'all just get, oh, I'm about to hit the mic. <laughs> don't even hit the donation jar. Anyways, it's donation only. Even if you're out of town, you can participate. You can DM me, and I'll give you all the information on that. 
But if you are in Oklahoma or if you are in the surrounding states and you would like to drive to Oklahoma, the mic on the couch is definitely an experience. I edit the video myself and you get to um, record on Pro Tools, but you only get one take, Jay. Only get one take to go crazy. So hopefully you've got it all taken care of in your head and you can get it done in one take. But I'm trying to bring back that Freestyle Friday, that old school feel. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Y'all lucky that I don't go into a, like a garage uh, and just post up with, like how they did on Avon. Don't play me. Yes, it definitely, it definitely can help. It definitely can. Thank you so much. What is it? Blazing Mojo. Blazing Mojo. <laughs> I think it's Blazing Mojo, isn't it? I said it like it was three different things. Don't judge me. Do not judge me. Um, October the 28th, Layla's social event. Um, Halloween. Um, I think it's uh, Halloween on 10th Street. Sorry if I didn't say it right. Um, anyways, it's October the 28th, the Hoochie Halloween costume party. It's definitely going to be lit. The, all the information is actually in my description. So if I did say it wrong, don't judge me. It's my medication. Okay. Okay. Because we're all on drugs. We're all on drugs. <laughs> gang, gang. Gang, gang. Gang, gang. Mmm, <laughs> popcorn. Mmm, popcorn. <laughs> yes, congratulations. That is what the fuck is up. <laughs> I know I'm childish. Do not judge me. <laughs> Do not judge me. But I'm for real. So now I know y'all. I, I keep saying that it's prison talk this whole week on the couch. So you never know what I'm going to say. But I do want to tell y'all about my first experience with one of the prison strap-ons. Because, <laughs> y'all, <laughs> I'm not into strap-ons anyway. I'm not into the little dildos and the coochie and the gag. But I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. Let me see if I miss dick. That's what I was really saying in my head. But I was just like, okay. You know, to my little girlfriend that I was with. You know, so. She's like, I'm about to make it real good. I got the saran wrap. I got the ace bandage. I got the pads. Yeah. Okay, so let me tell you. If you don't know, it's two pencils. They can be long, short. Depends on how long you want it. You get two pencils. You get an ace bandage. Because you're going to wrap that motherfucker up. You hear me? You're going to wrap that bitch up. So you, you, And then the saran wrap, that's your condom. So you got to make sure you have saran wrap. Because you don't want... You, I don't know. It just feels like weird, I guess. With just fabric in your pussy hole. So you want some... You want some saran wrap the condom okay <laughs> so you have to have a jigger otherwise this is not gonna work you don't have a jigger you're not gonna be able to fuck nothing you gonna be every time you hear keys you gonna be like uh, uh, oh shit shit fuck fuck okay <sighs> gotta start over you gonna have you gonna be doing that because it's it's so much anxiety but when you have a jigger and you have a proper jigger, guess what? Your jigger is not going to let the police even in the motherfucking pot. Your jigger fuck around and have that motherfucker outside on the other side of the yard. What? Don't let you have the right jigger in prison. Y'all going to be fucking the whole motherfucking council. The whole time that the yard is open, y'all going to be fucking. I'm not lying. I'm not lying. So... Dildo made, jigger ready. I'm like, okay, boom. She like, you ready? <laughs> she trying to make it. I'm just like, girl, let's go. <sighs> it was the worst. I did not like it. I don't, I'm already, like I said, I'm not really into like penetration like that. So it just, it, it was never going to work. I don't give a fuck how skinny you made the little dingling, the little fake dick. I just, and then too skinny. It's like a motherfucking pencil, because it is a pencil, stabbing me in my motherfucking pussy. And I'm not doing that. And then if it's a little too thick, you still going to be hurting just like you in the world. So listen. 
Matter of fact, the girl wasn't even my girlfriend. We was just cool. She was just like, yo, um, remember what we was talking about the other day? You want me to just try it on you? I said, you know what? Okay, a jigger is somebody that <laughs> is somebody that like basically let you know if the police is coming. So basically they'll be if the police is walking around to one dorm and they see that they in the next dorm, they're gonna be like, I'm not even gonna do ski you. They gonna do that. Okay? Or they're gonna be like, hootie hoo. They gonna do something. And then when they hootie hoo, that means start wrapping that motherfucker up. When they be like, damn, officer such and such, you so fucking crazy. When they do that, all extra fucking loud, that officer is in your dorm. But they doing it so loud to where they don't hear you coming out the door. So by that time you heard the doo doo doo, you, you already wrapping it up, pussy getting the last lick of the little, uh, you better come. You better make sure that you come between that time. Because if you didn't come, baby, you're going to be looking at your girl through the motherfucking window during count like this. Like, wait till I get back over there. I'm about, we about to get another jig. You better get these noodles to this jigger again because we about to finish up. <laughs> and a lot of times when you feel like you about to finish up, that's when you get caught. Okay? Because by this time, they like, nah, I done seen that saran wrap. Nah. Okay, trash can full of saran wrap. These motherfuckers in here fucking. Okay? <laughs> Yo, if you ain't never been to prison, then you would never fucking know. Now, the women prison is way different than the men's prison. Now, I will say this. Now, you get the right jigger for the shower, that one, you don't need no toys for that, baby. They just get the mouth and get the, oh, you get to put your legs up. Let me tell you something. When you put your legs straight up like a motherfucking folding chair. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. So, you know, you get to do a lot of stuff in prison. But it ain't fun. That's not why I'm telling y'all that. I'm just telling y'all because I got a lot of stories. I did nine years in prison. There's a lot of shit that went down. Fuck. Yeah, there's a lot of shit that went down. I think the worst experience sexually for me, you know... I'm not really in no disrespect to the Americans that's watching. I love y'all. Let me tell you something. And what I mean by Americans, I mean, and I'm not just saying that because I'm from Trinidad and Tobago. I'm just saying it because Americans, I mean white. So, I don't know. It was like my first time with like a white girl. It was like a little different. And, um, you know, and I was trying to... <laughs> I was trying to get in the, they got this thing in prison that they get with people, they got money, you know what I'm saying? So they don't got to worry about paying for nothing or they could be they trick or even if they fall in love with them, whatever the case is, you know, I try to do that. And the girl just really, 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 really fucked with me. She really liked me. She was just like, and I was like, one day I was like, you know what? I really just can't do this. Like, <laughs> I can't see myself just putting my mouth continuously on your pink pussy. Now, I ain't mad that it's pink, but it's pink, bony, and different. And so, yeah, it tastes different. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. And I done had my fair share of white coochies just to see if I was tripping. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Sometimes... You got to get a sample. And when you get a sample, and it ain't the food that you asked for, you just put it back. You feel me? You get your little saran wrap, condom, and then you get to going. However you choose to put your face in it, you get to going. <laughs> it's the Couch Chronicles, and it ain't no fucking limits. <laughs> Period. I know y'all probably like, what? Prison talk? Or or what are we talking about? Yes. Yes. Well, it's a lot of shit that go on in prison. Like, I didn't always have bad times. I ain't gonna lie. When I was in the band room, hey girl, you know, when I was in the band room, I had the best time of my life. It was literally like, it literally was like I wasn't even in prison. 
Like, sometimes we would have different privileges than everybody else. Like, we was the first band that got to perform in front of the whole yard. So, I felt like a fucking superstar in prison. I didn't give a fuck about nobody not liking me or none of that shit or thinking that I'm fucking they women, which, yeah. So, um, I mean, you know, but being in the band room, it literally was like, that was, that was our world. Like, we had our own family in there. Aside from the family that we had on the actual yard, we had our band family. And we stuck to, we didn't give a fuck. I'm talking about you, bands in the world, you know how they be going through shit with the drug addicts and the, nigga, we went through that shit too. I am not kidding. I'm talking about throwing motherfucking down in that bitch because motherfuckers were strung the fuck out. No fucking lie. You would have been like, the way I'm, I'm dead ass serious when I'm telling y'all this, but I'm, I'm talking about our drummer was so motherfucking, and I love her to death. Love her to death. That's my motherfucking dog. Can't nobody say nothing about her. I don't give a fuck if we don't talk. If we talk, she know who she is, but she was strung out. You know what I'm saying? It was easy to get strung out on the yard, especially when you had different influences around you and, you know, and you already going through stuff. So our, our drummer was literally like, you would have been like, is this a motherfucking movie? You know, um, it, so that's why I say it, it literally felt like we was in a different world. We had our own world in the band room, you know, um, and I love my band. I love my babies. I love them so much. Even if I don't talk to all of them, like that literally helped me so much with my time more than anything because of my wife. I was always in the band room with her. Like, I got to spend all my time with her, too. You know, her, it, her first, then the band room. It literally completed my time. Like, it literally was, when they moved me to a lower security, I was so fucking miserable. I'm, like, and people was like, girl, you mad that you went from, from maximum yard to, to this lower security? You mad about that? And I was, I was, and y'all would never understand. I was so fucking angry. I didn't want any friends. I didn't give a fuck that they wouldn't let me come out a lot. Cause when they took me to lower security, they put me in lock. They was like, you ain't even hitting GP. You think I gave a fuck? I didn't give a fuck about none of that shit because I did half of my time, eight years in, in Mabel Bassett. And then you take me because you're mad about something away from my woman and my families that I have on the yard because of something that you are mad about. That I was so angry. Like I was I like, it's like being in a foster home and being ripped out of a, a home that you really, really gave a fuck about. Like it was the worst feeling for me. Like I was miserable when I went home, you know, cause you know, I still had the feelings and the thoughts of, being taken away from my people, you know? And people were just like, damn, like, you are ungrateful. Like, it's people that were killed to be at this lower security right now, and you up here mad that you got taken from higher security and put in lower security. And I was. I was mad as fuck. I was so fucking angry. I was depressed. I didn't want any friends. I tried to, I literally tried to not talk to anybody. And the only ones that I would talk to is the people that literally just came from Mabel Bassett. I'm like, yo, uh, what the, I get any messages? Like, like I was so concerned about what was going on at Mabel Bassett that I didn't give a fuck about what was happening at Eddie's. Why the fuck did y'all bring me to this bitch anyway? It says, cause you was doing good in that bitch. Yes, not only that is, I always believed in standing for what I believe in. And as you see, it got me taken to a lower security. You know, because I wasn't going to just let them officers or staff talk to me any old kind of way. And that's what really got me fucked up. You know, one of them did something to me. And I, I was like, you know, you really acting as if to the warden. She pulled me up to the front. 
And I'm like, you really acting as if I fucked your husband or something. And she was like, well, did you? And I was like, and that's all I did. And after that, she put me in lock for like 60 days and then shipped me to a lower security and left me in lock there. <laughs> so, yeah, I was really standing up for what I believe in. Because, bitch, excuse me, why are you talking to me like this? Yes. I'm like, you act, the way she was treating me was as if I was like, trying to steal her husband or something. And I was just like, girl, you really acting as if I'm trying to fuck your husband or something. She was like, well, are you? I was like, like, you never know. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, yeah, that's what happened. I got shipped, put in lock. But, man, I'm talking about my wife and everybody was hitting the back. Like, they was hitting the brick wall. When you hit the brick wall, that means you could talk through the wall. So they was talking through the wall to me like, we love you, stay strong. We fighting for you to get out. They was fighting for me to get out. And they told me that I was going to get out. And the day that they said I was going to get out, they was actually shipping me to another fucking wall. It's the Couch Chronicles and it ain't no fucking limits. Y'all know I do this every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from 8 Central Time. It's prison talk on the couch this whole week. So if you get tired of me and my stories, I got a lot of them. So you might as well not tune in this whole week. <laughs> All right, yeah. Follow Couch Chronicles No Limits on Spotify, Pandora, THA Couch on Facebook and TikTok. Couch Chronicles Dot No Limits on Instagram and my main YouTube Instagram and my dot com, which is THA Real J A N E L L. Let's get into another song because it is prison talk, so you already know what time it is. Because, you know, we don't play when it comes to our music. Okay? We did that big time. Y'all know this is our anthem. If you haven't heard this song, it's one of my singles. It's called Time. Type in my name, J-A-N-E-L-L, and Time, and this song will pop up. If you listen on Spotify and Pandora, make sure you search this song on Spotify and Pandora. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the like button. If you're watching on Instagram, share the live. Let's go. Hey, big time. I did big time. Give me up to me. They took me straight off the front line. I'm not lying. Been watching my mama cry up in that courtroom. Then the judge just dismissed me like I was dumb too And the bailiff looked at me like, what you gon' do? My mind is fucked up, so all I'm thinking is I'm gon' shoot And reality said it like it was supposed to Cat calls down the hall, that's what them folks do Brown bag, bologna sandwich, and them jumpsuits My cellmate just did a hundred years on some dumb shit, damn Is this the end of the days? Cause living in the cell is just like being in the grave Ain't no money on your books and you ain't eating shit You better pray that you can mail a penitentiary gift But I'm lonely days, a visitation list From your family and your friends, that's a major lift And yo, spirit, all the drama on the yard You wanna forget it, yeah, yeah Behind these walls is different And you wouldn't understand if you didn't live it Ay, big slime, I did big time Ay, and they took me off the front line I'm still scarred from doing my time And everybody said I should let go I'm trying but it gets up into my mental And I'm at the pain you know, I stand ten toes You know, you know, now you know I'm home, that ain't wrong And I know I gotta think different Cause if I don't, then I guess I'll be the same nigga Wait, I'm trying to let it go I'm trying to be a better person so I don't have to get physical. I gotta get my mind right for the limelight. I don't care who's judging if they don't know the one time. I'm trying to be an example to my fans and all my peoples and my nieces and my nephews. Big time, I did big time. Sitting in the cold cell in the daytime. Your time be fine, but it's not like the world, no. Big time. Hey, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And if anybody has watched that video, everybody that's in that video, I actually did time with them. So if y'all didn't know, it's prison talk on the couch this whole week. 
I got a couple news you can use, and then I'll wrap it up. I ain't going to be in your hair too long because I'm going to be in that bitch tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> news you can use from the couch. Now, I don't know if anybody remembers when um, this was a few uh, years back. Um, it was a woman who fatally shoved her Broadway coach. She shoved him down, and um, he bumped his head, and two days later, he uh, died. Or her, I'm sorry. Um, her name was Lauren Pazaneza. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Lauren. Well, you in jail. You ain't going to be able to see this. But anyways, um, she originally took a plea bargain. And this is another reason why I brought this up. Thank you. I brought it up because I always talk to you guys about taking plea bargains um, from the DE, DEA or the court, the whatever. When they do that, they are literally just trying to make you cop the fuck out. And a lot of times they may, they tell you something and then you thinking, you know what? Yeah, I'll take it. And then at the last minute they renege and do something different than what they said that they were going to do. Well, they did this to this young lady. She took a plea bargain, right? So not only did she take a plea bargain, but she was thinking that she was going to do like what? And this is manslaughter, by the way. She was thinking she was going to do like maybe two years. I don't know why she thought that. Anyways, she got way more time than what she thought she was going to get, than what they said that they were going to give her. They basically upped the time on her, um, which I'm not saying that what she did is right. She's guilty. They obviously found her guilty. All I'm saying is this. Come on now. When you do a plea bargain, you got to remember that they can do and they can do whatever the fuck they want. You know, they are going to try to make it seem like it's a good deal. Yeah, go take that eight months. Take that eight years because you're only going to do five. Take that eight years because it's nonviolent. You're only going to do... They're going to try to convince you. They're going to get in your head. They are definitely going to try to get in your head. And it's going to sound good to you because you're like, Oh, I want to get back to my kids. Oh, I want to get back to my man. Oh, I want to get back to my woman. It's going to be something. And you're going to be like, you know what? I don't want to snitch. I'm going to go ahead and take this plea bargain. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm telling you. Fight that shit. Because after you fight it, Say you fight it and they give you 10 years. Okay? Boom. Now, you can appeal that. Okay? Because when you take a plea bargain, that means you forfeit everything. You can't renege on that. You can't be like, you know what? I want to fight my case now. Even if new evidence comes up. No, you took a plea bargain. Now, if you fight your case, like I said, if they give you 10 years... And you fight your case. And you like, you know what? I'm going to fight this shit. And um, when you go to court, say they was like, you know what? I'm going to give you a different deal. They can't go up past 10 years. They got to come down. They have to come down. What goes up must come down. Okay? They going to come down for you. So always remember that if you are fighting a case, which shout out to everybody that's fighting a case right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm sending positive vibes, love, strength your way, and patience, because you got to have patience in there, for real. You know, and it gets hard. So, you know, stay strong. Don't snitch. Don't snitch. <laughs> stay strong. Don't snitch. Okay? But, yeah, don't take a plea bargain. Always, always, always fight the case. I don't give a fuck if the odds seem like it's stacked against you. They can... Never go back up. They can always go down. Taking a plea bargain, you forfeit all of that. You won't be able to do any of that. Even if evidence proved that you are completely innocent, you took a plea bargain. They ain't got to bring it back up to court again. <laughs> they don't. By law, you signed a plea bargain. You forfeited that right because you said, hey, you know what? I'm guilty. I'm going to take this eight... Oh, really? Oh, no, that's right, girl. You, I took this eight years, and I'm sticking with it. Don't call no lawyer. Don't be like, <laughs> I, no. <laughs> no, no. It's done. So fight your case. Fight your case no matter how long it's going to take, because guess what? When you get in um, to the pen, if they end up making you do some time, you're still going to be in there doing some time. So fight your fucking case no matter how much you be missing out on. It's going to pay off in the long run. I promise you. I promise. I promise. 
more news you can use from the couch. Don't play with me. I got you. An inmate in Georgia is accused of killing a correctional officer. I'm not smiling because he killed that. Whoa. Let's get that out the way. Y'all know I got a smiling issue and a laughing issue. It says, I met a younger guy in jail that was forced into pleading guilty on something that he didn't do. Sometimes you can't win. Listen, because he took a plea bargain, they convinced him. It's not sometimes that you can't win. No, that's them making you think that. Don't ever think that you can't win, ever. Don't ever think that. You won. Just keep fighting. You got to keep running to get to the end of the finish line, right? How else you going to get to that finish line? You think stopping in the middle of in the race that you're just going to be like, and it's going to come to you? Like it's just going to be like, and hit you in the face. No, no. No, baby. You got to run to that finish line to get there. So, fight your case. I'm just saying. Um, but like I said, an inmate in uh, Georgia is accused of killing a correctional officer. Now, that inmate that they're saying that did that, um, one, he's in there for life. I think life without action. I'm quite sure because that officer has only been there, I think, about six months or eight months. And I'm sure that doing all that time or knowing that you had that much time, anything can trigger you as far as like an officer disrespecting you or if, or if they make you feel some type of way. you like, you know what? I got a life sentence anyway. What they going to do? I got life without. What they going to do? Give me life without out? <laughs> so now there was another inmate that was there that actually tried to help the officer but he is actually in the hospital right now too now I want to ask this for those that's watching and you know we all did time well not we all did time but for the ones that did time you know um, and y'all know prison talk is this whole week listen to this how do you feel like, how would you feel if you seen an officer getting stabbed in front of you? Would you run from the situation or would you try to help that officer and risk getting yourself stabbed too? Now, the reason why a lot of people risk getting themselves stabbed too, let me tell you this. Because if you save an officer, they you discharge the next day. Supposed to be. Supposed to be. For real. You're supposed to be discharged the next the day. Matter of fact. Shit, if it was in the morning, you gone that night. For real, you if you see an officer getting beat the fuck up, stabbed up, something, and you rescue them, your sentence is clear. <laughs> you gotta go. You have won the award of rescuing an officer. Now, they don't always honor that, but nine times out of ten, you either get some time taken off your sentence or you discharge them. Yeah. As you said, it's blue versus orange. They don't forget what side you're on. I'd have to mind my business. <laughs> I've seen it. I Listen, I've seen both sides happen. Now, I've seen somebody save an officer and leave. And I'm like, It don't matter how much time you have, I'm telling you, if you save an officer on the yard, depending on where you at, I'm telling you, some of them honor that. And you yourself can be like, you know what? Um, There was a case in such a state. You look up that case, you go to that law library, my baby. You go to that law library and you look it up. And it'll tell you exactly, you know, where to look up, what case you can rep, what you can say to represent your case, like, you can be like, yo, uh, in Arizona, um, D Jonathan Stiff, Jonathan Stiff, um, he saved an officer, and he had 25 years violent, and he only did two years of it. He saved this officer, and he discharged. Is there a way that you can honor whatever he, he was honored, whatever they honored for him? to get me out of prison because I actually saved one of your officers as well. So if you ever are put in a situation and you save an officer, you go to that law library, you look up whatever case it was that, because it's happened. It's happened. You can look it up. You can look it up. 
and it will help your case. So if they don't decide to honor it for you, you can help them do that. Okay. <laughs> hey, hey, it says number one is going home to the family. If saving them kills me, it's not worth it. Right. Right. And the guy, I want to say the other inmate is in critical condition. Um, the officer died immediately. And, um, yeah. And the inmate is obviously in lockup. So, that happened in Georgia. Um, also, I want to say this. Shout out to Washington because the, Sup the Supreme Court will hear cases with a lot of buts, ifs, over the meaning, and. And the reason why I bring that up is because a lot of times it's about what is worded and how they word things. That's how they get you. Because they know the loopholes. You don't. We don't. They know the loopholes. They know that that's why they put if. But. That's why they use those type of words. It says, I don't trust people who put me there to honor that rule of letting me go. Yeah. So, you know, it's the loopholes for me. You know, they, they do that on purpose because they, they want to railroad us. And I'm sure they get bonuses for this type of shit. You know, so you just got to really... And Washington is the first to do this, so that's dope as fuck. They're going back on a lot of different cases, I'm sure. Um, if, and, if over... But, I mean, ands and buts over ands. So, you know, they can say anything that they want to, and they can put if in front of it. Like, if you, and then it's going to be whatever they say. And then that's the loophole. The motherfucking loophole. These bitches is getting away with some fuck shit. It's the Couch Chronicles, and it ain't no fucking limits. I will see y'all tomorrow on the couch. It's prison talk this whole week. If you tired of me, then guess what? I don't know what to tell you. I ain't going nowhere. Period. <laughs> I love y'all so much. And I will see y'all tomorrow on Prison Talk on the couch. It's the Couch Chronicles. And it ain't no fucking limits. Let me do one of